check it out. A minute 21 to go. Uh, having to suit back up. I think we actually done that. Uh, I think we did that last year, if I'm not mistaken. Here? No. I feel like I've done that last year. Uh, yeah. I got to check back in. I mean, what's the feeling uh, for for the, the starters in that situation? Obviously, you want to um, finish out the trip on the right note. But. Yeah, that's kind of the mindset right there, finishing out the trip on the right note. I mean, had a comfortable lead. Both teams kind of pulled their starters and put the bench in. <clears throat> we give up three threes, turnover. It cuts to five, 17 seconds. Um, their ball. Uh, I don't think Ham even like asked. I got up. Brian got up. We looked at each other. We both took our shirt off and was like, you know, we don't get a stop. And then if they foul, we'll make free throws. And you know, but uh, <clears throat> it's a learning lesson, you know, especially for our young guys, just coming there, staying ready. Um, knowing that three is the only way they can get back into a game, and uh, you know, make sure we're taking that away. There were some teams on this trip that have been struggling a little bit, um, but you guys took care of business. Five and one. Those trips are hard to come by in this league. Um, what did you like best about kind of your guys' approach? Um, <clears throat> just taking one game at a time. You know, obviously to start the trip, double overtime. Uh, and then to how the, res the resiliency and the mental toughness to come in and you know beat Memphis, um, tough one in Indiana, kind of left that one slip. Um, the last two we just you know Toronto and uh, well I'm missing one right? Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn come out on fire on both ends of the floor, third quarter, turn the ball over. Um, end up, <clears throat> you know, closing the game out. Uh, but I think like a common theme, especially for like the last three games, uh, playing with leads, um, especially late in the game, uh, that seems to be a thing. You know, we, we start off pretty good or had a third quarter where we, you know, create a lead and then uh, usually let teams back into it. So, um, you know, we can't let that become a, a thing for our team, especially these last couple games um, and heading into the postseason. So, um, but for the most part, I mean, you know, I like how we, um, you know, approach the road trip. You know it's a big road trip for us with um, every team obviously is capable of beating us because um, they're high power, high power offenses. But we came in and locked in defensively to be able to uh, go five and one on the trip. How's your face? Good. <laughs> it, what, 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 what happened on that? What happened on that? It's called an elbow to the nose. Um, that's it. Was it your eye? No, that's my nose, yeah. AD, only a couple minutes of the game, but like end of the first quarter, end of the third, now trying to integrate Gabe, so that group is it was small. Uh, sometimes Jackson, his joins, sometimes Rio. What What's the challenge for you when you've already been in the quarter to anchor that? But just looking at those those groups and how, and what, how do you maximize that with the rotation? Uh, um, you know, obviously you're still trying to get uh, integrated into the offense and our schemes and things like that. I mean, the ball's going to be in his hands as a point guard. But um, he's still trying to find his rhythm, uh, find his legs, hit a couple good looks um, in the two games that he played. But uh, it's going to take time. I mean, he missed several months, right? Um, haven't really played all season. So that, that takes time, especially coming in and playing <clears throat> this time of the year. Uh, it'd be different if we, you know, top seed, we're a little bit more comfortable where he can play um, a lot more minutes. Um, but we don't really have a lot of room for error. Uh, so coming in and having to almost be damn near perfect, um, you know, you don't want to make any mistakes to cost us a game or anything like that. Um, but we're trying to make him feel comfortable, uh, work his way back into the offense and uh, let him lead the troops when he's on the floor. But um, still trying to help him out, you know, get him good looks, uh, set good screens for him. You know, my job to let him get downhill and get to, you know, his mid range, which he likes to shoot, or, uh, you know, his pull up three, or, you know, get downhill and find guys. So um, I'm not sure what I plan for him, like the next five, but uh, he looked good the two games that he played. I know when you're in the NBA season, it's, it's so hard to, like, ever step back and reflect on anything. 
just ignore him. Um, <laughs> the uh, did you reflect at all though? I mean, being back here today on kind of what this last year plus. Has yeah, been no, for you? sure. I feel a little weird. You know, I was here for five years and then came back. Uh, I don't think I haven't got back since that. First since time, then, right? yeah, yeah, this is the first time. So then, yeah, it's just a little different, you know. Um, but everybody will come back, and I know these people that work here. Uh, from uh, Wizards or whatever, so you know they, they came say hi, and uh, it was great to see them. You know, um, I miss them, and yeah, it was a it was a great time in here. So yeah. Rui, just the LeBron was one well, last one for us. Le, LeBron was talking about the the continuity that you've had now with this group. Um, obviously, you played some together in the spring and the run through the playoffs, but what is just getting back to that that unit with Austin and with D'Lo, with LeBron and AD, and you, like kind of the comfortability that you have? How much do you think that's had to do with this winning streak? Yeah, we're just you know comfortable playing each other. You know, um, offensively, defensively, we already you know we are, we have a good chemistry. You guys can see. You know, we already had that in the playoff, and then we find that he got back. I know the, the beginning of the season we were kind of, you know, injury and all the line and change and all that, so we didn't have the time. But you know, now we, it's a we got we got we got back together and like right right on time. So we just gotta keep building it and then um, get ready for the payoff. And I, I don't know if you keep track of you know like your shooting percentages, but in March and kind of continue not to today, it's super high. Have you felt that that, that rhythm is a part of that continuity, just with where your shots are coming from and how how smooth it is? It's just the playing with these like you know growing AD. They, they get a lot of attention, so I get a lot of wide open show. You know, it's easy. It's a practice show. You know, I, I practice with the Phil. You know, all the time, and we always talk about. You know, just gotta gotta be the guy shooting those t uh, threes because you know, with this lineup, you know, I'm, I, I I was I gotta be the one. You know, be open. You know, they can guard. You know, they can leave uh, Ar, D'Lo. You know him, Ad and the Bronx. So you know, it's just a it's a it, it makes it easier for me. Yeah. Thanks, Rui. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I was talking to Darvin before the game about kind of you know, your defense and how much you've had to do guarding a lot of. Sometimes it's a guy you got to chase all over screen. Sometimes it's a primary ball handler. It's a big ask, and then to have to play offense on top of the playoffs through the USA. Like it's just been a long year, basically. How are you trying to manage yourself down the stretch as you get to like still important basketball coming up? Yeah, I mean, just do the necessary things in my off time. Take care of my body. Get a lot of sleep. Drink a lot of water. Um, but you know, that's what uh, I want to do. Uh, I want to be, you know, in those positions to you know make plays offensively and defensively as well. So um, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. Results have been coming, right? This is nine out of ten wins, five and one on the trip. You haven't moved up in the standings, so, and I think you guys know that. But do you feel the process has been there, though, that the way you guys are getting wins? Do you think that's something that that you've kind of gone over the corner in that way? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, the only thing we can do is control what we can control. Um, the rest of the league will shake out how it shakes out, but. For us, um, you know, our main goal is to go into every game and win. And you know, we've, like you said, we've done that recently at a high level. Um, five and one. Oh, oh, sorry, five and one in this road trip. Uh, you know, it was a really good road trip. Obviously, we wish we won all of them, but uh, it's not what it was. And uh, I'm happy with where we're at playing. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but I suppose this is the kind of keep the main thing the main thing type of thing, right? Absolutely. Last game on a. 11-day road trip, 10-day road trip, whatever. Um, come off a back-to-back, get in late last night. You do whatever you need to do to take it down to uh, to win the game. So, I mean, it took all 48 minutes, and it's a good trip for us. Hell of a trip for us. A minor thing here, but the you know you guys having to go back in, the young guys kind of squandering things late. Do you, do you use that as a teaching moment as a leader? Yeah, absolutely. You just uh, you know that's how you learn. Best teacher in life is uh, you know is experience, and I guarantee they'd be better next time if they if they put in that situation. So five and one in this trip. Nine to ten overall. Uh, you guys have at least put yourself in position uh, to move up. If a couple other teams start losing a game or two, uh, where where do you kind of focus as you get home, get some rest for five more games? Uh, our focus is on our next opponent, and not what's going on in the rankings. That it, that those will decide at the end of the season where everybody will be at. So our, our next opponent is Cleveland, but I'm obviously, you know, we're, we're excited to kind of get a day off and just kind of, you know, get away from the game. I know I am. I know I am. Tomorrow will be a great time to get away from the game and. It'd be great for us to have these two days in between games so we can kind of get our body back, um, you know, acclimated to the West Coast after being on the East Coast for, you know, this time up here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been, it's good. It's been good. What do you like the most about where this team has been at over the last 10 games or so? 
I think offensively we've been very consistent with our ball movement, sharing the ball. Um, we still got to crack down some of the unforced turnovers, but you know we've been all in a good rhythm, um, playing off one another. I think defensively we've been, you know, good, you know, good at times. Um, we could be a lot better at times, but you know we need to get our stops. Um, we've got them. We got it done um, throughout this whole trip. The season is so long. And you go through so many different iterations. Do you feel like the twists and turns you guys have been through have made this group in particular? Stronger um, I think health has helped a lot too. You know, we've started to get healthier. Um, I told you guys early on when we were struggling, it's hard to have any chemistry, any camaraderie, or you know that type of on the floor when you're changing lineups and guys are in and out of lineups, guys are hurt, guys are in, you know. Different starting lineup, different rotations. You know, the best thing that's you know lately is that we've had this, pretty much the same starting lineup. You know, I mean, unless I've been out of game or whatever. AD may took out the Memphis game, but for the most part, it's been D'Lo, AR, myself, Rui, AD. We had that that group, and then we know when guys are coming in. So we know when Spence is coming in. He's usually grabbing D'Lo at one certain point, or AR. Um, we know Jax is coming in at the start of the second to get AD. You know, TP and or. Uh, yeah. Max, come get me at a certain point. That that helps because you just you get a good rhythm, you get a good chemistry with groups that you know you're going to be playing with. So you know what you want to get into and run into offensively and defensively. So I think that has a lot to do about our success. LeBron, whether it's uh, playing or the first round, you guys are going to have to win some games on the road at some point. Yeah. Um, I'm the last guy you should ask about winning a game on the road. Well, no, no, no. I, I know, but like for, for, the, for the group <laughs> as a unit, like yeah. what, what can this trip do in terms of just confidence? Because you guys hadn't been nothing. Nothing. This no nothing. I mean, this trip, what it does for us right now, we want to continue to build chemistry. We want to continue to play good basketball. But the postseason is still kind of ways away. Even you know, I know we only got what six games or what is it, six games left? Five games left. Postseason prep, all that other stuff is totally different from the regular season. So wherever we fall is where we fall, and wherever we got to go, if we have to go on the road, that's fine. That's fine. Just, that's what the that's what it that's what it uh, came down to, and then we'll take that we'll take that approach when we get there. LeBron, when you watch the women's college game these days, what stands out to you about the way they play, aside from maybe some of the star power we're seeing? Uh, what stands out about the way they play? I guess, I mean, they play the right way. Um, but the men do too. They're, they're, I don't think there's, you know, much difference between the men and women game when it comes to college basketball. I think the popularity comes in is the icons that they have in the women's game. You know, you look at, you know, Andrew Reese, you look at, you know, um, Juju, you look at Kaitlyn Clark, you look at Paige, you look at the, the young girl that's in Iowa, Iowa State, the freshman there, you look at uh, Brink, I believe her last name is, at, uh, at Stanford, um, and that's just to name a few. I mean, the, the freshman that's at Notre Dame, they, because they are not allowed to go to the NBA, I think they have to stay all four years, correct? Three years? Okay. Oh, you have to be 21. Okay. So Aaliyah Boston wasn't 21 when she wanted to come out after her junior year, right? She had to, but anyways, you were able to build, you know, like a, a, a real, like, iconic legacy out of, out of program. And that's what we all love about it. You know, that's what we all love, and we love the girls' game because of that um, that moment. You, you actually get to see those girls. That's what make the Final Four and the Elite Eight so great. You know, I mean, Iowa was a great team, um, but Clay, Caitlin Clark is the reason we tuned in. You know, um, you're going to watch um, Purdue because of Zach Eady, because he's a great player. We watched that Purdue Tennessee game because of Zach Eady and Kinnett. Like, like, so let's, we don't, let's, uh, it, players, depending on who they are, will drive the attention, you know, when it comes to viewership. Um, but the girls, they just, they always play the game the right way. Passing and cutting, um, sharing the ball. Uh, they definitely don't get on the floor for loose balls and things of that nature. But, you know, there's men's teams that's doing that as well, too, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but the star power, you know, that we have in the women's game outweighs uh, some of the men, too. Because the men, too, also, they, it's hard to keep up with a lot of guys, too, because it's this transfer portal. Guys are moving different, like, it's hard to keep up with a certain individual. You know, it's not the J.J. Reddicks where he was there at Duke four years, or Shane Batty who came back for four years, or, you know, the Miles Simons and Mike Bibby's in the late 90s when they was playing. So, you know, it's just a different, it's a different time between the men and women, and men's can come out right after their freshman year. If I have a big-ass season in my freshman year of college basketball, I'm going to the league. If a girl has a great season, if Juju, like Juju, she, she can't come out.
Like if she could, you think she might? Maybe. But that's the difference. Last two. You've been shooting the lights out from downtown like a couple nights ago, nine out of ten. And you said how much it's important for, yeah. you know, for teams to respect you. This breakout kind of season in terms of shooting, what do you attribute it to? to mentally uh, or technology or shooting? Coach? No, I've been able to get um, no, I've been able to get a lot more work on the floor this season because my foot has been a lot better than last year. Um, I really couldn't on off days or you know in between games or whatever get much work done because I had to stay off my foot uh, because of the injury last year that, that, that took me all the way through the postseason. So um, you know relative to last year, you know I'm still dealing with it a little bit, but it's been a lot better than last year. So I've been able to actually been a lot more consistent on putting the work in on my shooting. Last question. Next week. I know that it don't. It doesn't really matter who you play first round. But just strategically, doesn't seven or eight make a slightly easier path than nine or ten would be? Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I haven't really started to look at it in that sense of like, okay, well, if we're seven and eight and we win that first game, then boom, we stay at seven. Who's the matchup? Or if we're in eight, you know, we become the AC who we played in. So I haven't really started diving in on that. Been more focused on like, how well we can continue just to play and play and play, which we've been very consistent over the last few weeks, and um, and that's why I want to I want to continue to stay on there. I don't want to look too far ahead, um, knowing the situation that we're in. Um, so I've been just trying to more taking it day by day, and like I said, when when that moment comes, I think we've got what, five games left, about two weeks left in the season, pretty much, and then that following week is time to go. So wherever, wherever we have to play, wherever it is, on the road at home, it is. It is what it is. Darvin, I'm sure winning was kind of the main point. You go five and one on the trip. At the same time, I'm sure you didn't want to put your starters back in for you know those final seconds. Do you use that as a teaching moment? And and, and what what do you say to the young guys in that kind of situation? Definitely. I mean, um, you know, it's unfortunate. <laughs> there's there's no such when you're when you're trying a young player, whether you're a rookie, second year, third year, whatever, or even a vet. You know, you're trying to sec secure the win. Topsy turvy game. We built a surplus. They climb back into it. We build another surplus. Put guys in the game, and no matter what time it is, it's like there's no rite of passage to be in this league. Whether you're a player, coach, executive, it doesn't matter. And then or even in ownership, there's no rite of passage. No one owes you anything. Um, and when you're trying to establish yourself and the type of player you are, you have to approach each and every minute. I hate the term garbage time. Like playing in the NBA. There's only so many spots, and you get a chance to play, even if it's the last 50 seconds. You go hard. You go hard or you stay home, pretty much. It's like you're trying to establish yourself, and you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. I've been a part of a lot of teams, both as a player and a coach, where someone saw the way someone finished the game when it was maybe out of hand, but they still went out there like it's a tie ball game, and they put their best foot forward every single possession or whatever, however many possessions were left. You just got to have that mindset, the mindset that nothing is given, nothing is given, everything is earned. So we'll, we'll uh, sit, and I'll sit down with a couple of our young players on Friday, but you know, I didn't want that. It's a teachable moment, but that definitely, I wasn't going to allow that to ruin the fact that, you know, we did what we did on this it's a six game trip. We had a little hiccup in Indiana, obviously, but the way we started, grueling game in Milwaukee, tough physical Memphis team. You know, going through what we went through in Indiana, being able to bounce back, Brooklyn, Toronto, and now tonight, uh, it's, it's, it's a great sign for our ball club the way we were able to push through. So five and one on the trip, nine and ten overall. Just five games left. What is what is the message for the final push? To continue to do things like we've been doing, them, one day, one game at a time. That's it. Like no, don't look too far ahead. If we go this certain number in the last five games or we go this certain number, just, just attach, attack each day and um, each game with as much juice as you possibly can to try to get the most positive results possible. Darvin, AD was so dominant in the first quarter and then for big stretches in the third and the fourth, um, their zone kind of, for whatever reason, you guys couldn't get him the ball. Um, how crucial was it to, to kind of re-engage him late and what do you think kind of kept that from happening in sort of the middle stretch? Yeah, obviously they changed up their pitches a little bit. Um, and I thought we just got a little stagnant, just just kind of swung the ball around the perimeter and didn't really try to engage the zone like we, we, we eventually ended up doing. Um, you know, when someone plays the zone, you got to set screens. 
you got to make sure you get the ball in the paint, and you got to have floor balance, and you got to have uh, a willingness to pass the ball and a willingness to shoot the ball, quick decisions. So once we figure that out and we start getting into you know some different sets that we got to combat the zone offensively, it's, it was good. You know, guys, Rui got some shots playing behind the defense. Brian got in the middle of the paint. AD got some touches in the middle of the paint, and we were able to come out on the right side of it. Darvin, uh, wh- whether it's the play-in or the first round of, of the playoffs or both, you guys are going to have to win tough games uh, on the road at some point coming up here. Uh, what can going, you know, five and one on this trip and just the, the confidence of that and, and the reps of being in different environments and surviving in, in you know, different circumstances, uh, what can that do for you guys just moving forward the rest of the season? Further educate us on how we need to play, how we need to play consistently on both sides of the ball, no more, no less. Every day is an education. Uh, when we look at it, and as we you know break down some different areas during our we'll watch film on Friday, um, in, in, in in the process of preparing for Cleveland on Saturday, but we'll watch a lot of us uh, and the way we look and the way we are when we do it right, and then we're not so much when we don't do it right, and so. We had a, a, a plethora of, 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 of areas on both sides of the ball that we can illustrate and things we need to clean up, things we definitely need to sustain. So this this is a, just a lot of material that we can use to, sh- to you know put the mirror in front of our, ourselves, so to speak, and again, reveal to us how we need to play every, every time we step out on the floor. And not to belabor the end of game situation today, but when there was 17 and a half seconds to go and there's the turnover and the, the timeout, I mean, are you just making eye contact with your main guys they already know oh absolutely it's a, it's a moment. absolutely yeah. care it's a care factor they're competing to the end and they got, you know if anybody's going to be on the floor if, with that team making a push they want to have control of the situation and so you know we, we messed around several possessions and, and, and flushed away some possessions uh, that allowed them to get back while we we're, we're, you know didn't have our best offensive possessions there in turn making shots and eating into the deficit that they were facing. Uh, so it's a great sign, though. It's just, just those guys just immediately making eye contact, pulling their stuff back on, ready to go in. And so it's great that the good part is that <laughs> if there is one in that scenario is that they had just come out. So it's not like we had a 30-point lead, 25-point lead, and, not, and had benched them with – seven, eight minutes left to play in a quarter. That's a different type of scenario. But the fact that they, they had just came out around a two-minute mark, I believe it was, you know, they were still loose and able to go back and close the thing out. It wasn't mean to you that you now have more wins this season with five games remaining than you had all of last season? We just hope, you know, we can go through the same journey in terms of securing a playoff spot and have a success and go even deeper this time. Coach, got a similar question. So you had a phenomenal stretch uh, recently, uh, 11 games above 500, but still in the ninth seat. Is it a thing that's on your mind and the player's mind coming into each and every game, especially in the last push for the regular season? Again, just to play how we're capable. And when we play the way we're capable, we play at an elite level, not high level, elite level on both sides of the ball. That's it. Each and every day, each and every game, we're just trying to see how we can extract that from within ourselves and, and keep it consistent. Last one. And Coach, can you talk about uh, Rui's play? He's come back to D.C. where he was drafted at. Can you talk about his play? Rui's has, has been great. And you can see him working at different things, watching film with the coaches, watching film with all of us as a group, him working on the small areas of his game. You know, everyone talks about the scoring, his shooting, shooting at a very high clip from three-point line. You know, obviously he's able to finish around the basket. and has a very reliable mid-range game, but I think the where he's making his most strides is on defense. His communication, his ability to guard the ball, is getting better and better, keeping the ball in front, um, and defensive rebounding. Those are the areas where you know I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of him, and that he's got to continue to, to continue to uh, raise his level to an elite level on that side of the ball. Thanks, coach. Thank you.